Boom, 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 boom. What's good, yo? What's good? I'm back. I told y'all I'd be back. It's time to get into a few interesting things, man. Once again, welcome back to Street Knowledge Podcast. Rolling with your boy, Big Boots. He's just the things that I do, man. I like to educate. I like to keep y'all informed with good information. Anything to keep y'all sharp and smart. Y'all go out there, learn some things, and come back and help me out, man. That's the purpose. We all need to stick together, help each other out. And whenever you see something ain't right on my part, like somebody correct me. You know, I ain't, I ain't too much. I don't, I don't too much watch the rap stuff and and uh, like I used to. And somebody had hit me up and corrected me on some spelling with some things of the right, the correct names of some of the rappers, and I really appreciated that. And I went back and corrected that. So you know, things like that is called helping, and and you know, I'm not afraid to admit if I've done something or said something that um, wasn't correct, and if somebody correct me, I appreciate that, man. Got to keep me sharp. Got to keep each other sharp. So pretty much that's what this segment is about, man. I wanted to do something to keep keep y'all sharp. This really go out to a lot of my people that's doing business out there, and if you're not doing business, it's still good for you to learn because you never know when you might get into a business where you might need this type of information, you know, um, towards your business and, you know, to keep you safe and to keep you from the headaches and the hiccups throughout your journey of pushing your business itself. So that being said, you know, I want to talk about uh, copyrights. Before I left y'all uh, earlier, I told y'all I was going to come back and we talk about some copyright stuff. So, you know, I'm going to get into a little bit but uh, about it, but y'all do your research because they have books on these things. They have books on management. Y'all get that lawyers be writing. Y'all can get them from like the bookstores and all that stuff. And, you know, go to Barnes and Noble, sit down in there and just read and study them. Even if you don't buy them, just study so you'll know fluently what you're talking about. And, you know, a lot of people want to be managers and don't know about management. Nine times out of 10, they get fired. Or some of them learn as they go going along, but there's nothing wrong with that. But make sure you do your research of what management is supposed to do. It's better that way, you know. It's, it's, it's it, you know, it'll, it'll uh, create a happy and successful career for you if you do it right. But if you're just going into it and acting like you know what you're doing and trying to watch somebody else do what they do, it's a, you can't really watch what management do because there's still tricks of the trades on the inside of things that y'all wouldn't know about. So you get them books <clears throat> and you learn. So with this copyright situation, you know, uh, everybody want to say, um, I've been hearing um, throughout these whole YouTube podcasters and things when, you know, um, I guess when you strike against another person's channel, Another person, the other, the other party would get upset with the other person, and you know I don't know the reasons why, but I, you know, I've heard like a lot of these podcasters be going back and forth with each other, and they get mad with each other, and I don't know the reasons. Maybe some reasons might not be a good reason to do it. They're just doing it just because, you know. But if y'all watch, a few uh, people have up the uh, the copyright thing in there in the corner of their screens some of them put it on the bottom some put it on the top it's called fair use that's so you can use somebody else's um material on your platform and not get sued so keep that in mind whenever you if you're doing video stuff you and you know blogging or whatever you utilize that just so you can get your point across but if you don't utilize that the fair use copyright symbol, then you're opening yourself up for a lawsuit and an automatic shutdown of whatever you already creating. So make sure that <clears throat> y'all keep that in mind. So when it comes to just, let's just say YouTube real quick. When a person utilizes somebody else's visual material and maybe even music sounds in the background. 
and that page is monetized. And monetized means that person utilizes somebody else's likeliness, their videos, their music, and utilizing it in their in on their platform, and they're getting paid for it. And even mentioning that person's or mentioning the 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 the, the name of the song or however it may go to rapper. And once they do that, and just say it goes viral, or just say it don't go all the way viral, but it gets 10, 20, 30,000 views, that's a paycheck for that person. So with that being said, if if you utilize that and you get you utilize another person's material and you get paid from it and you don't give them a service fee or no money from it, then that's the strike right there. It's just an automatic strike due to the fact of you getting paid and you're not paying nobody else and you don't have a uh, you don't have a permission sign sheet or some some type of form of permission to utilize that person material then that's the strike there's no such thing as um a youtube police or whatever this is a business and the business itself um acts on on things that's supposed to move accordingly so for instance everybody on instagram you have to say i don't own the rights to this music or guess what Instagram going to shut you down. There's no Instagram police. No, it's because all the major labels that's out there that has something to do with the artists and even the artists themselves don't want people putting their music up because people get paid off YouTube as well. And even if you're not getting paid off YouTube, it's just that's the YouTube guideline. I mean, not excuse me, YouTube, Instagram. Every People's getting paid off Instagram as well. So even if you're not getting paid off Instagram, it's the uh, it's the Instagram guidelines of how they um, want to run the Instagram um, platform, and they don't want nobody putting other people's music up there due to copyright infringement. Mike, right now my page got shut down, hacked, whatever you want to call it, because they were sending me stuff. And 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 about um, about music. So you know, this is what y'all need to know too. Don't get caught up into your video. Know and be aware of what you're about to post before you post it. Because I was, you know, it been certain times like I just be having fun. I'll be on Instagram posting with my homeboys, and somebody might have a car right next to me, and it's playing somebody's music. That's a a, a national artist. And I'm not paying no attention. I'm just recording me and recording my homeboys having fun. And next thing I know, I get uh, I get hit by Instagram about they took my video down because of copyright purposes. And I'm wondering, like, why would they take it down? Then when I listen to them, I'm like, oh, wow. And I have to take the whole video down. Because I wasn't paying attention. I did that like two, three times. I wasn't aware because I'm really not doing it because I'm trying to make money off of the record that's playing in the background. That serves me no purpose. But that's how serious copyright issues are. Copywriting is not, you know, issue is not a game. And you got to think about it. Y'all artists that's up and coming, y'all uh, business personnel, whatever y'all going to be, when you are creating something from your brain, nobody thought about it until you thought about it. And when you thought about it, you went out there and put it out on the market and the world loved it. Now you making money from it. You blowing up, you making moves. Your, your product is everywhere. Your music is everywhere. Then here comes somebody, wanna indirectly, it's, it's like bootleg, bootlegging your music, bootlegging your, your bags, bootlegging your hats. You see your stuff somewhere and you sitting somewhere in your house, you might be out eating and somebody ride by and and you walk by and got your bag or ride by 
and the music sound like yours, oh, that sound like my song, like, but the words is different. Or your face on a billboard selling something else and like, hold up, why my face on that billboard selling them pair of pants and I ain't nobody contact me and give me no money about those pants that's up there and my face is on it. It's all the same thing. Can't use nobody likeness. You can't use nobody's um, um, creations that they created from their brain and utilize it for yourself. However you might try to go at doing it, you cannot do that. And those are the reasons why YouTube will go up there, will, will go and strike you for that. That's why people that's on YouTube, they're doing it everywhere, see they stuff somewhere and they're not getting paid from it, they, they're gonna contact YouTube and get it shut down. If you are at a company and you're a record label, you're gonna have your lawyer contact the artist or whoever utilizing your face, your likeliness, your products or whatever and have them put a season to cease on that. They have to stop. So it's the same thing with YouTube. It's called season to season. They telling them to have them people stop utilizing my music or my videos or my likeliness on their page. It's all the same thing, but except for when you're not in the YouTube world, you're in, the, that, in our regular world, you have your lawyer contact and stop it and make it go away. You can't use that no more. Prime example, my friend McGruff. <clears throat> Everybody know McGruff. Um, if y'all don't know McGruff, he was signed with Heavy D, God bless the dead. Um, him, Cameron, uh, Mace, Big L, all of them was a, was a, a group, separate artists, but they was a team together back in the days. But that's who McGruff is. Um, when he first came out, he was McGruff the crime dog. And he started getting popular. His records starting to blow up. So I'm with Monifa, a few joints with a few cat, the Locks, Mace. I want to say DMX. But anyway, his name started ringing heavy. You know, they promoted him right once they put him out. And he got popular out there. Guess what happened? Do y'all remember McGruff the Crime Dog? And for y'all other cats, young cats that don't know about the commercial with McGruff the Crime Dog, they always said stop doing crime. Y'all can Google it, it's on YouTube. That was a big commercial that was that played every day. They his, their lawyers sent <clears throat> sent my boy paperwork to stop utilizing McGruff the crime dog. And that was a cartoon character. And ain't too much harm my boy could have did to that character. I don't know. Maybe in their mind they have their reasons for doing that saying so but he had to stop using McGruff the crime dog he was only just can roll with McGruff or Gruff that's it that's how simple it is to shut down some something when you're using someone else's craft that's what that's all about another prime example AZ from Mob Style, um, the Mob Style rap group, AZ. Um, he was a big, big rap group, big name, big phenomenal. Could have went further due to a lot of a crazy mess, but they was doing, making big noise all the way upstate New York, all the way down to VA a little bit, North Carolina. It was about to sign one of the biggest deals with Columbia Record. Records for uh, 300000 I believe, back then. Um, and uh, then you got AZ, Nas, that's with, with Nas. I don't know if Nas put AZ out, but y'all know who AZ is from Queens. And the AZ that I'm talking about is from Harlem, for those who don't know. 
two separate entities. AZ and Queens that was with Nas came out. He utilized the name AZ. AZ from Harlem was already a rapper already from the mob style group. AZ from Queens, that's with Nas, titled his album Sugar Hill. I think the name was, was Sugar Hill or Sugar Free or whatever. It was Sugar Hill. He used the name AZ, the one that's with Nas now. The AZ over here in Harlem that's had the group Mob Style. Guess where he's from? He's from the original Sugar Hill. All that area up there where he's from is called Sugar Hill. So he put a lawyer on the AZ situation and sued for half a million dollars for utilizing the name, utilizing the, uh, I guess the concept Sugar Hill and everything. And um, that's how simple it is for you to get caught up in copyright situations. That's how serious it is when it comes to people that own their craft. And somebody else uses it without permission. That's kind of, that's a sign of disrespect. And that's how the court of law take it. Sign of disrespect. And if you can prove it, the court of law going to award you some money. And especially depending on how much money the actual song, the video, or the movie might have made, you're, you, you, you're going you're gonna to take a loss by even taking somebody's likeness. So it's two sides to it. So I want y'all to understand that too, to never want to take nobody else's likeliness or their uh, creations and try to utilize it for yourself because it's going to be a waste of time, a bunch of headaches later on, red tape, you know, and it, it'll catch up to you. I got another um, scenario. So, um, my group, Hold on. I got one more. Okay. Um, I was a group. I was in a group back in the day with my my bro Kevin Frost. Um my boy Ronnie Stone. We was called the Young Guns of Harlem, which this is a mixtape. I mean, this is a, a single that I had put out back then from and y'all can see you know all my information on there I professionally done all this stuff I did all of this in like 90 1990 and this is a cassette tape this one I was rapping this was um, I can say I was one of the first to be out there pushing music before my brother Dame Dash and them was doing it. And I've been trying to push the independent movement on, uh, you know, on that, that hard grind. But, and I'm just saying that because I was a young boy, but you got to give it up to AZ and Mob Style they actually did it and pushed it and was actually about to break through. Even got in beef with Easy e and them, Easy e and them, this them, this mob style, which was called the Good, the Bad, the Ugly. And mob style went back at them maybe one time. But so I learned a lot from, from my brother AZ with that push the music stuff. Cause they were, you know, that's the big bro. And I was a young boy and I started running around doing this and unfortunately I end up getting caught up and locked up and I didn't finish to get to finish doing what I was doing. So um, when I came home, I continued it, what I was doing. And I put out singles with uh, McGruff, with Big L. I still got the single with Big L. 
it's floating around the internet. Somebody put my song out there and they put L name on it, but it's my song and I'm looking into that. That's another copyright infringement that somebody's doing and putting my stuff on the internet. You can go up there and check it out. It's, uh, hold up. Matter of fact, it's right here. It's called Harlem NYC by me. Boosie, they didn't put the big Boosie on it. My boy Nat from Die Hard Records helped me put this project together. And these are on CDs now. This is after I came home and started putting everything together. And um, my brother McGruff, we grew up in, he, uh, him and Big L was very good friends and he introduced me to Big L. And I put Big L on the single. And on the remix side, it's called Hall of NYC. And uh, my boy Digger was on there too. And um, me and Big L, you know, we became great friends, brought him down south, North Carolina. When his career got a little quiet, they was focusing more on Nas. And me, McGruff, Big L, we was running around touring down here in the south and everything. So I'm saying that to say, that's what I was doing. So I was out there running, making noise, rapping, doing my thing and everything. Once I came home and um, putting up my own money, pushing my thing independently. And and I'm saying that to say, because I want you, you guys to understand independent movement is where it's at. And my brother Damon Dash speaks about that a lot. Independent movement is, is harder, but you know, you get in what you put out. That's it. So, as time go by, progress, you know, L was getting with, I tell him, yo, let's roll together and do something with my label. He said, Jay-Z and them, Dame Dash, sent for him to have a meeting. They want to sign this flamboyant. And I was like, oh, all right, cool. Do that. That's bigger, bigger platform. And pull me in. He was like, yeah, of course. And we can make some other moves happen. Unfortunately, that thing happened to my bro. But I'm saying that to say, um... After all of that, I kind of start slurring and putting other artists ahead of me and start pushing other artists. Then come Lil Boosie. Lil Boosie started hitting, the, you know, hearing his name, hearing his name, hitting the airwaves crazy, going, going crazy, putting out hot records, hot records. You know, I was I was a fan of the guy, and I liked that he had my name, but so many people was calling me up. Yo, man, that new guy, man, Lil Boosie, man, you know you can sue him and get, get, get your money for him using your name. You was out first. And I just showed y'all on my cassette tape when I started rapping way back then. So I have paper trail of my music. I sold a lot of records overseas. Lots of them. You name it, I sold it. Germany, Africa, London. That's how I was making making these moves, making that money through unique distribution in Hyde Park, New York. So, everybody's hitting me up. Yo, yo, man, you need to get your lawyer on that. That's a lawsuit, homie, homie. Man, he making noise. First thing was in my mental, you know, where I was raised. And, you know, at the time, I wasn't even thinking about rapping no more or none of that. And, and, and you know, just, it was just me. I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to interrupt what homie had going on because my heart wasn't there for the rap thing no more. Even to this day, like my brother Arcanelli, big shots to Arcanelli. He was like, yo, Boosie, you, you, you've been rapping. You need to come back out with, a, with an album. Just, you know, put out some hot stuff and put it out there in the streaming world. And just let us accumulate money. And he been told me this. And I thought about it. I still think about it. I might do something. I got a lot of friends that's nice, you know. Um, but... 
I didn't want to sue Lil Boosie. I wanted him to do his thing. And he was a younger cat than me coming up. So I'm like, nah, I'm going to let him live, man. I ain't, I ain't, I'm not doing that. I don't, I don't feel like going through all that. And interrupt, you know, another brother's flow. And that was just me. And I probably could have got some money, but it wouldn't be enough. It wouldn't, have, I, don't, I don't know. It probably wouldn't have been no real money that would have been, uh, you know, a, a life changing. And I'm I'm saying even if I would have got a half a million, that's really nothing. People run through half a million easy. It's been done. Trust me. So you know me, I'm just a thinker. You know, maybe one day me, I might could get with him and we might could do something and make bigger money and it'll be longevity money, something that my kids, 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 kids can have later down the road. That's how I was thinking. And that's where my mentor is at. And I was still thinking on a level of I'm going to have my artists and I'm pushing them and I'm going to make that happen. So I didn't sue him. So the copyright thing is serious and you got to be careful what you do when you're doing it. And, you know, people can't help that they might have the same name that another person got. Sometimes people think the same and they're not even in the same state. It's called uh, great minds think alike. And just so happen y'all put it out and then y'all clash and then that's why they do the season to cease because they give you a chance to stop what you're doing before we put the lawsuit out as well. So that's another example of copyrights infringement or copyright things that I'm trying to explain to y'all about that how easy it is. And I got one more for y'all. So I know y'all remember Miguel the singer. And uh, Miguel the singer and he did a song with Kendrick Lamar. It's called How Many Drinks. Well, and they did the video for it. Well, my artist, so when y'all <clears throat> get off from here, y'all look it up on YouTube. Kendrick Lamar featuring Miguel, I mean, uh, excuse me, uh, Miguel featuring Kendrick Lamar, How Many How many Drinks remix, right? And y'all listen to the cadence and listen to the beat and everything. I'm going to still play it for y'all right now so y'all can hear it, but you do it in the comfort of your own, you can hear it more clear. But my song was done 13 years ago with my artist named Flaw. And really, you know, we was just having some fun doing some things, you know, uh, with the videos and all that. And I threw it up on YouTube. And our song is called How Many Drinks. And the artist was Florida rapper, but the guy singing on there is my boy named Quote. I met him at uh, Lil' Kim house when, uh, when I was running with Lil' Kim, working with Sis. Big shots to Lil' Kim, love you, Sis. Um. But Quo was a, his pen game me, he writes, he wrote for Lionel Richie, Michael Jackson, um, um, what's the song, um, Trey Songs, um, wrote with, uh, Mario Wine, he wrote songs with, with, with him, um, Track Masters, worked with them, his, his record is impeccable, <clears throat> that's my boy. So I'm going to let y'all hear the song. <clears throat> I'm going to try to get to the hook real quick. And y'all can listen to the cadence of Miguel's song. Y'all can listen to the cadence of my artist's song. Ours was done 13 years ago. And it's on there. So y'all go to YouTube and y'all pull it up. And the name of my artist is it's, uh, it's Money League. It says Shorty Putting On. But we mixed two songs together so they can see what was coming next. Because we was putting out mixtapes. But you'll hear Shorty putting on at the beginning, but you go to about 154 and you'll hear the song that I'm talking about that was out 13 years ago. And then Miguel come three years afterwards and put his song out. 
And my guy that wrote it, that wrote the, uh, the song, he didn't really sing all of, of it. We just wanted to put out a quick piece on it. <clears throat> but he didn't give it to nobody. He didn't sell it to nobody, nothing. We was all shocked when we heard that song. So I'm going to let y'all hear this real quick. This is the Miguel version. Hold on. So cast out a line. These commercials. Reel in a Coors Light and chill like you're retired. And they got 152 million views on this joint to the point. So you see what I'm talking about on that now. Keep that cadence in mind. And he had the rapper after the hook. So, so y'all can rewind this back and listen to both songs again. My song was first. Three years. Well, this got 13 years ago uploaded. Kendrick Lamar's got 10 years ago uploaded. And he got the rapper on there. Mine's got the rapper on there. We did it first. Now I know y'all saying, man, why you ain't sue him? Trust me, I would have sued the hell out of him. So I talked to my lawyer about it. Once I heard it and somebody put me on it, I went into action immediately, called my lawyer up, told him to check the songs out, both of them, and called me back. He checked both the songs out and he called me back. And he said, Boosie, you put the songs up there for free. And you didn't have them copywritten. My error. Always get your stuff copywritten. Always get your, you know, your, your patents. Get all that stuff done. Because somebody going to come from the left and snatch something you've done. But that right there is not a coincidence. Um, um, great minds think alike. Because you listen to the cadence. They stole the cadence for the song. They stole the words. They stole the concept of putting a rapper on there. Everything. They stole the whole everything. And that song was about to go on radio out here. It was about to go on the rotation on K97.5. That song would have blew up stupidly the way that song, the way his song blew up, even though he had a bigger name. But that song was a hit record. That's why they stole it. The only reason why it didn't go up on K97.5 because the program director had a discrepancy up there. And I think he quit. And I was scheduled to go up in full rotation. And then somebody come behind me and just take my record and I couldn't do nothing about it. So when you got the power to be able to do something about it, when you are in control of your, your, your craft, your, your material, your hard work, you don't let nobody take that from you. 
So use me as an example. It happened to me. You know how many M's I probably would have got from that right there? It's 154 million views on that song. And I didn't get nothing from it. My artist didn't get nothing from it. My boy who wrote it didn't get nothing from it. So how you think I feel? How would you feel? So anybody that tells somebody on these YouTube platforms, these Instagram platforms and all that, there's no such thing as no police. It's not no police. It's about respect factor of using somebody else's craft and can't get mad if somebody say you cannot use their craft. That's not how this thing work out here. You got to respect the laws of the land. And that's the laws of the land, and that's the law. It protects you, it protects me, it protects everybody. But if you get caught slipping like I did, then that's what's going to happen to you. Then you're going to be, you know, upset. And, you know, I can't cry with spilled milk. I ain't even, I was upset at first, but I ain't even let it bother me no more because that was my learning lesson. And what they say, they always say you're never going to get things right the first time you're doing things. And you're only going to learn from having mistakes. And I learned from that mistake. So that's what this video is for. For you guys out there that's more in the business that requires copyright and things and patenting things and all that. That's what this video is for. Spread the word. And if you're not a person that is in, you know, the, the market of um, patenting and copyright and you might get into it one day. And if you don't get into it one day, I'm sure you know somebody that is into doing, you know, um, things of that nature in this type of business or businesses. And you pull their code and ask them, is they stuff copywriting or patent and see what they tell you? Because now you know you ain't in the business, you can still enlighten them on a few things. So this is very important, man. This video is very important. Y'all make sure y'all share this, share this all day, for real. So we can have the right and correct perspective of copyright, the right perspective of why YouTube do what they do and take things down. And that's a, a and, it, and it's not just for no one person. They, they, you know, when YouTube strikes somebody, it's to protect you too. You might have something on YouTube and start blowing up and somebody else start utilizing it. You want to have that power to hit YouTube up and ask them and give them the correct information about something about your stuff is being utilized on somebody else's platform and you would feel good and it make you feel better that your stuff got took down from a person trying to make money from off of your craft. Now, if they want to utilize your stuff and they want to do it the right way, then they would contact you and tell you and you will tell them you work out a percentage with them and tell them what you want for it. If they don't want to do what you ask and then they got to kick rocks, keep it moving. Or they might say, yeah, or they might say, well, y'all might can come to terms and negotiate something. But at least it's done correctly. And that's what it's all about. And that's how you handle this copyright stuff. So take it from a brother that been there, done that, know people that's been there, done that. It is what it is. And I got plenty of other things to talk to y'all about. So y'all know what it is, man. It's your boy, Big Boosie. You know, these are the things I like to do, man. I like to educate. I like to see everybody smile. I like to see everybody winning. I like to see everybody getting some money, having fun. That's where we from. We from Harlem, and that's what we do. And we, we share. We don't, we're not, we not selfish. We don't want to hide no information for what. There's enough money out there for everybody. For real. I want to argue with you about taking you out to lunch or taking you out to dinner because you took me out to dinner the other day or lunch the other day. It's my turn to pay. That's what me and my friends argue about. That's what me and my friends going to stay arguing about because that's what it's all about. So we learn these methods, man. We're going to go a long way, very far. They can't stop us. We stick together. I'm telling you, we're too powerful mentally and physically. So y'all know what it is, Street Knowledge Podcast, man. I ain't stopping, man. I'm keeping it coming. For real. It's not a game. I'm for my people, man. So y'all make sure y'all share this. All my new people, subscribe. 
Hit the notification so you know when I'm back up. Y'all go ahead and check out what I got going on. What I, you know, what I'm bringing, you know, the next episode or whatever. Um, all my people that's been donating, I appreciate y'all. Hit up my new Instagram, the real big boosie, B-O-O-T-S-I-E. It'll be in the description. Um, and you know, for all donations, y'all, it'll be in the description as well. Money sign Bernard Riggin, R-I-G-G-I-N. Bernard Riggin, and um, that's pretty much it, man. Thanks for your time. I'll be back very soon, man. I got things to do. It's time to run around. Peace.